Welcome. Welcome to the broadcast. All right. So I'm on the road, so that's why you see I'm in the hotel. But uh, so here we are. Praise the Lord. It's going to be uh, it's going to be how to walk in a good conscience. A lot of people, when they become a new creation in Christ, a lot of people, when they when they start walking with God, a lot of people, even when they get filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and some don't even know to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So when we become a new creation in Christ, you know, uh, there's been a, le uh, a lack of teaching in the churches, a lack of teaching by our ministers about how to train our conscience. Uh, because we still have the conscience of the world when we become a new creation. And when it talks about old things pass away, all of them old things pass away, but behold, all things become new. Amen. So there's a behold in the process. And in the process is, is okay, if you obey, the Holy Ghost is given to those that obey, 532 of Acts. So by obedience, by our consecration unto the Lord, by the applying the word of the Lord in our heart, that we may not say sin against thee, may not sin against God, may not sin against the people. So we have to apply this word in our hearts. If we draw close to God, he will draw close to us. That's in James 4, 8. I've hid the word in my heart that I may not sin against thee, that I might not sin against God or sin against the people because we want to be witnesses of Christ. And for us to be witnesses of Christ, we have to consecrate ourselves unto the Lord. We have to train our conscience. This is important. We have to train our conscience what's right and wrong. Amen. Because before we become a new creation, our conscience were compromised drinking. Our conscience were compromised smoking. Our con conscience were com compromising, uh, you know, pornography, lust, whatever it may be. Whatever our conscience was compromised in the world, in the world, in the fleshly desires, we have to train it and possess it with the Holy Ghost. Amen. It says the conscience is where we, we can be convicted by our own conscience, but for our own conscience to be able to convict us, we have to train it up and be led of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It says, if we walk in the spirit, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. So that's Galatians 5.16. So I want to start, God, Lord, God, just loose your anointing upon tonight, Lord, this morning. Loose your anointing upon everyone that's watching right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, just wash us with the word. Even today, Lord God, wash us with the word of truth, God. Wash us with the word of your Holy Spirit, God. Wash us with your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. And so when, when we start... Uh, to train our conscience, we have to train our conscience through the word because the word, I believe the word and the Holy Ghost and your conscience works in partnership. Amen. We have to work in partnership to train the conscience and we get convicted by the word. We get convicted by the spirit and we get convicted by the conscience. But for us to be convicted by the conscience, we have to allow the word to teach us and to wash us with the word. We also have to let the Holy Spirit fill us, fill us up fully his spirit and train us what's right and wrong. Amen. But because uh, we are, we're, we're, uh, what is it? We're, we're as filthy rags. We're, we're no, not one or righteous, but, but because Jesus died on the cross and because we accept him in our life and we ask him to make himself at home inside of us, uh, because we apply the word in our hearts to not sin against thee, because we hunger and thirst after righteousness, because we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we become the righteousness of God. Amen. He, he put himself and took the place and became sin so we can become righteous in him. Amen. So <laughs> it's good stuff. So y'all hang in there. <laughs> but this is amazing word. This is a lot of... Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of teaching that it's not being taught in the world. 
and and you know to we have to have morals as Christians. We have to know where to stand. We not had to know rightly to stand. We got to know rightly to judge. We got to know rightly uh, how to how to give morals to our body as as uh, have respect for ourselves. We we got to know how to walk. We got to know how to live. We become peculiar people. We're not the same. We're not from the old. We become a new creation in him. And when people look at us, they look at Christ. Amen. We should reflect uh, the reflection of Christ. We should reflect the Father's heart. We should f reflect the, the manifestation of his presence because we become one in him. We join hairs with Christ even on this earth. We get to visit heavenly uh, places just as Christ was death, burial, and the resurrection. The same as we baptized in the new way and, and resurrected, you know, baptized in our old way, resurrected in our new right hand. Uh, we're literally on the right hand of God just as Christ was. And then He uh, we inherit all authority because we are sons and daughters of God. Amen. So this is, this is really good stuff. So we take on the mind of Christ, the renewing of the mind. This is part of, of the transition of becoming a new creation. And uh, the conscience is so important to train in the renewing of the mind. It says the renewing of the mind. Um, now I'm quoting all these scriptures, not even going on about one-on-one, -on -one, but this is so good. Lord God, loose your anointing upon your people, God, upon our minds. To, to, to be renewed, the washing of the mind, the washing of our hearts, the washing of our souls, God, the washing of our conscience, God, in Jesus' mighty name, by the word of God and by your Holy Spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Psalms 119, I've already quoted a few times, is how I hid the word of the Lord in my heart. I've hid the word in my heart so that I may not sin against thee. Now, when I look at thee, it's talking about the Father, but also, I look at it as it's talking about the people too. So when I interpret that scripture, Psalms 119.11, I actually put thee as the people and God. Because we can only, not only sin against, uh, not sin against God, but we don't want to sin against the people too. Amen. So we have to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, but also unto the people. So we have to set the example, be witnesses as God put before us. And, uh, uh, but how God intended us to live as witnesses in Christ. And then it talks about uh, the second. I just got a few verses just kind of speaking on the word, how the word is is so important in the midst of training your conscience, what's right and wrong, uh, being convicted. And and so, uh, and then of course, I'll lead into the bare witness of the Holy Spirit because the bare witness of the Holy Spirit is, is important too because we need the confirmation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can't go by by every minister and every prophet and every evangelist. We can't go by that. We got to go hear the word of the Lord for ourselves. Amen. We're becoming in a, we're coming into a dark hour and we're already in a dark hour and it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. And we got to hear the voice of the Lord for ourselves. We got to hear the bare witness of the Holy Ghost for ourselves. Amen. So here we go. John's 8, 31, I got, and 32, it talks about how the word makes you free. It cleans you. It washes you from the inside out. I'm going to just quote it for the sake of time. So it, it washes you free. It makes you free. The Bible says it makes you free by the washing of the word. So the more we apply this word in our hearts, you know, the more we applied it in our mind, the renewing of the mind, the more we applied it in our heart that we may not sin against these. So the, the, it, it tells us the word gives us power, amen, to overcome. The word gives us strength. It gives us direction. It gives us the authority, amen. The Bible says that the Bible gave Jesus power to cast out uh, devils. You know what I'm saying? It through the word, he was able to cast out devils. Through the word, we're able to cast out devils. I remember walking walking in the word so much that I literally became a walking word. This is about 13, 14 years ago, maybe even 15 years ago. I was walking in the word so much, I was literally possessed 
by the word. And I would walk in the huddle, uh, waffle house. I would walk in wherever I go. And all I would do was quote word. I was just so indulged with the word. Cause I, all I would do when I get off of work is read the word. All I would do every single day of my life. And so I would apply the word of the Lord in my heart. And that's what helped me train my conscience. What's right and wrong. No, no, I'm, I'm convicted by this, but I'm convicted. I'm, I'm, I'm on a whole nother level of conviction because I've applied this word in my heart to a point where I train my conscience. I learned how to wash my conscience and train my conscience how to live upright before the Lord. Amen. How to live as a righteous lifestyle unto the Lord. You got me? And so, and so I was basically possessed by the word, amen. And, and, and I become, I, I literally transitioned in the word that gave me power and it gave me authority. It gave me boldness to walk in the Waffle House and preach and testify what the Lord has done for me. And in that, God is like, so good. It just empowers you. It just sets you ablaze. The word just gets you on fire for God. And that's all you want to do is preach the gospel. It's the only thing you want to do is tell everybody about Christ. It's because the word lights a fire inside of you. Uh, the Bible says that uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And that's in John chapter 1. So when you read that, you're like, whoa, John chapter one says in the beginning was the word. So this word was in the beginning. These were all led of the Holy Spirit, the, every word. Amen. So when we apply this, of course, we can cipher through through the Holy Spirit through our and everything. But for the most part, we apply this word in our life. It will set us ablaze and set us on fire. We become invisible in Christ. We become untouchable, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because we've totally uh, consecrated. We've totally committed ourselves unto the Lord. It's just like, it just gives us power and the hunger of the word just alone. I'm just speaking on the word. The hunger of the word only gives us more hunger. That's the good thing about hunger. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God Luke 4 4 Matthew 4 4 it says if we apply this word in our heart that we will only get more hungry it doesn't it I mean we're satisfied we're yeah we're but it only makes us more hungry amen see the word of the flesh like uh, not the word of the flesh but but as we eat in the flesh little muffins uh, breakfast, real food, meat, it only pacifies us. It never, it never fills us. You know what I'm saying? We're filled for a minute and then we have to get more hungry later. But no, the word of God, it only gets us more. Uh, that's honestly out of all books ever that exist, the Bible um, is, is really my only interest. Even the best, uh, you know, my favorite people in the world, Bill Johnson, Todd Bentley, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, you know, things like that. Uh, people like that, Rick Joyner, you know, just um, so many different people. It, and and see, all these people, I can't even read the whole book. I, I just get, it just gets bored. My favorite people in the world, you know, uh, men of God, you know, um, women of God. You know, I just, I lose interest. But when I read the word, it's like the only thing that gravitates me. It gravitates me and it just holds me and it just wants me to read more and more and more. I just get more hungry. And uh, it's all these encounters are great and everything, but, but bro, uh, it's like this word of God. It's just, there's nothing like it. Amen. If that makes any sense. Mike Bickle, I love him. Corey Russell, um, you know. All them great people, Sean Bolts. Whew. All right. So praise the Lord. Here we are. <laughs> now bear with me. Uh, hanging in there. So I might I might jump on a few rabbit trails, but for the most part, I'm here to explain and to 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 teach about how important the conscience is and how to walk with a good conscience. And even the conscience uh, bears witness with us. Even the conscience convicts us right and wrong. See, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, when we train our conscience 
uh, it's like that gut feeling, you know, you know what I'm saying? You get that gut feeling, you know, it's not right, you know? So it's the same thing with the conscience. And when you get that gut feeling and you know, it's not right and wrong, or, or you know, it's wrong. And it's because you've applied the word in our hearts and it, it just, it just, it just washed the conscience clean and you got a pure conscience. And so with that pure conscience, you're able to rightly be convicted by the conscience and, and even a bare witness of the con conscience. So you can actually also have a bare witness of the conscience in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So here we are going back to the word now because uh, the word, the Holy Spirit and conscience work as partnership to convict us. And, and, and to uh, to rightly, you know, um, teach us how to walk up right before the Lord and helps us overcome the flesh and helps us overcome the world. Amen. So here we are. Uh, so, I, yeah, I quoted Matthew 4, 4 for you. It's Luke 4, 4, 2. It's man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And it's the hunger of the Bible. The hunger of the words just only gives us more hungry. So then John 1 talks about the in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then the word was made flesh. So how important the word is, you know, this is like a living word. Amen. And then Romans 12, excuse me, Romans 12 talks about the renewing of the mind. See, I already spoke on a few things already. But Romans 12, 12 talks about the renewing of the mind, amen, but by the washing uh, of the blood, the washing of the word, the washing of the mind, you know, where part of our conscience is in, 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 in getting filled with the Holy Spirit and the word, applying the word, it washes our mind. So we have a clean mind because our mind, you know, see, that's the thing. We have to have our mind, our heart, and our soul, you know, becoming one. And our conscience and our mind works together. Uh, they're actually two and two, almost two and two the same. But conscience and your mind, you have the rightly mind thinking, but you have to have the washing of the word, washing of the mind, the washing of the conscience. You have to train the both conscience and the mind to work together as partnership. Your heart, your heart knows what's right or wrong as part of the mind, the soul, the conscience, all that, all that works together. But through the word and the Holy Spirit, it trains us to become one. Amen. So when we become one in the word, one in the spirit, it's able to overcome the flesh. Amen. So we have these in sync, one mind and one accord. The washing of the mind is so important. Because our thoughts and our minds take our thought in, into captivity. Amen. And through the captivity, we're able to train our conscience and our mind to work together through the Holy Spirit, and through the word. Because that's the only thing we'll be thinking. That's the only thing we know is because the kingdom minded. Because we have we have uh, been in, you know, sowing in the word. We reap the word when we sow in the word. So if we only put the word in our minds and our hearts and our souls, guess what's going to come out? The mind, the heart, and the soul. Amen. When you light a candle in your mind and, or light a little fire, just partic particular like this room, say this is your mind, and you light a little fire, you put God in the middle, right? You light a little fire and you feed that fire, the whole room becomes light, right? Amen. Same thing with your mind, same thing with your heart, same thing with your soul, same thing with your conscience. You have to feed it the word. You have to feed it the Holy Spirit. And when you feed it God, it becomes a, a room full of light. Amen. So, in Matthew 5 and 6, we spoke about it. It's hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. So the more we sow, the more we hunger, the more we get filled. James 7, it talks about uh, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So when we apply the word in our hearts, when we apply, allow Holy Spirit to come inside of us and keep feeding this, same way this kingdom minded. If, if, if all I'm putting in is uh, Christian music, you know, contemporary music, worship music, that's the only thing I want to do is worship, right? If I only put in this word, all I want to do is quote word. I become a living word. Amen. We actually transition into the word. We transition into the Holy Spirit. We become one in Christ. We become the countenance of the Holy Ghost. We become the countenance of Christ. 
And so when we apply these things, all we got to do is open our mouth and release kingdom. Amen. Because the kingdom of heaven is within us, right? And the more kingdom we put inside of us, the more we invest in the word, the more we invest in the Holy Ghost, the more we invest inside of us, the more of the washing of our conscience, the more of the washing of our mind, the more of the washing inside of us. And when we release the kingdom, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly, it has to store itself in there. Amen. <laughs> For our sake, to help us overcome. Amen. But we get to release it in the atmosphere. And then there's also a greater manifestation too. We're not speaking on all that today. I'm just speaking about the conscience and the renewing of the mind. And the bearing a witness of the Holy Ghost and all these things working together. But, but you know, you even got two kingdoms merging together. The kingdom of heaven, the, the greater manifestation that comes upon you when you're in the go. And then you got a, a, a manifestation from within you that you can release. It's a kingdom, kingdom of heaven within you. You release it. Amen. Into the atmosphere and it shifts the atmosphere. When you walk in the room, when you carry a manifestation, when you know you're carrying a manifestation and know who you are in Christ and you're walking in that place of a good conscience and you walk in the room, you know the atmosphere is going to shift, amen, because you know what you're carrying. You know who you are in Christ and you know the authority that is resting upon you. You know the government that's resting upon you because you are walking in sync with Christ, amen. And so when you walk in a room, you know what you carry amen and you release that authority you know it's like uh it's like i don't even have to release it out of my mouth and shift the atmosphere i can i can shift atmospheres wherever i go because the kingdom of heaven is within me and and uh there's no kingdom that can withstand his kingdom but now when the kingdom of heaven is upon me i don't even have to say nothing all i gotta do is walk in the room there's already angels around me we already got angels around us anyway but the some angels carry another another manifestation of his presence. Amen. So some angels consistently ascend and descend because they're messengers of God. How do you how do you think we get all kind of words of knowledge and wisdom and things like that to release to the church and to the people? Because we carry another manifestation, and there's always a messenger ascending and descending. So there's there's always a manifestation of his presence around us. Amen. Does that make sense? So the more we're in the go, the more we're in our calling, the more we in his will, the more of the manifestation of his presence will be upon us because we're always in the go doing his will. Amen. Preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leopards, cast out devils, freely you receive, freely give. That word is upon my heart. And I will preach it <laughs> until the day I die. But because I stay in the go, there's going to be a more manifestation. There's going to be a more of angels. When you stay in, the, I mean, I want angels that, that's going to hang around me that's not going to get bored. I want angels ready to do something that's in action, that, that's on assignment. Amen. I don't want angels around me that gets bored. Amen. So... <laughs> So when I walk in a church, when I walk in somewhere, I want them in, in the go, amen? Because we have to entertain angels that surround us. We have to walk in boldness. We have to walk by the word. We have to walk in the word. We have to walk with the authority and know what we carry. Anyway, back to the word. <laughs> so good. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So that lives inside of us. We have rivers of living water inside of us. So good. And that lives in the conscience, that lives in our belly, that in our heart, rivers of living water that we invest in. Holy Ghost. So, so I just want to go over, I, I just went over quite a few scriptures of the word, how we get washed in the word, in our minds, our hearts, and our souls our conscience, how to, how to train our conscience. Amen. Uh, even when we get filled with the Holy ghost, we have to be led of the spirit. And when we get led of the spirit, when we, when we learn that the spirit is lead us in the right direction, we get to train our conscience, the direction that the Holy spirit is leading us. Amen. 
And we got to allow the Holy Spirit to wash our conscience because when we're living in the world, we live in compromise. We live in the flesh. And so our, our conscience get used to living that lifestyle. But when we become a new creation in Christ, we have to wash the conference. The, the conscience has to be delivered, the conference. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a little earthquake going on here. So, so here we are. We got to train our conscience. We got to... We got to allow the conscience uh, to know what's right and wrong. And through that, we have to wash it with the Holy Spirit. We have to wash it with the word. We have to train it. And the conscience, when we, when we, uh, when we're going the right direction, we're walking in a good conscience. Does that make sense? I know I'm walking in a good direction because, because, because God, you know, taught me. <laughs> The word taught me. Amen. So here we go. I wanted to go over a few scriptures in conscience, uh, about conscience, so y'all can know, say, hey, look, it is in the Bible. Um, but yeah, conscience is in the Bible, and, and it's really uh, our, our, some of our strong points, amen, uh, of how to walk clean, uh, a clean lifestyle, how to walk up right, how to, how to um, let's see. So where do I need to start at? Uh, John, uh, John 8, 9. You can write these scriptures down. But I just wanted to just kind of go over a few things on conscience. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience. So they were being convicted by their own conscience. How did they be? Um, hey, what's up, Brother Billy? God bless you, my brother. So how did they be convicted with their conscience? First, they had to train their conscience. Uh, first, they had to teach their conscience with the Holy Ghost. So they were, they, were, uh, they were convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning the oldest and, and even unto last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman, yeah. So they were convicted by their conscience right there in John 8, 9. In Acts 23, 1, it says, Earnestly beholding the count, is that the one? Yeah. And, and said, men and brethren, I have lived all good conscience. For them to live as a good conscience, they had to be trained. They had to be possessed by the word and the Holy Ghost. Amen. They had, they had to train. They had to rake out the, the old. They had to get cleansed. The washing of the word. Amen. Oh, sweet. Hey, Miss Dina. So, uh, let's see. Romans 2.15, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. So here the conscience is bearing witness. It's so important to know and, uh, and trust your conscience. And, uh, you know, when you get that gut feeling, when you know something's right and wrong, you need to, you need to train that conscience when you become a new creation in Christ to get filled with the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to train your conscience what's right and wrong, because that's how we're going to know. I'm going to recap a little bit. That's how we're going to know, uh, you know, if, you, if, if you were partying and, and, and way back in the day, uh, in, in the world and you know, your conscience was cool with that. It, it, it was cool. I'm just using that for an example. And then if you're, if you were being lustful, pornography, things like that, your conscience was cool with all that. It's okay. But if we don't train our conscience, just like the renewing of the mind, we have to renew our conscience and train our conscience because our conscience and the spirit of the Lord and the word, they work in partnership together to overcome you, to help us overcome the world and the flesh. Amen. So when, when the spirit of the Lord, I feel the confirmation of the Holy Spirit. I feel the confirmation of, of my conscience. I feel the confirmation that bearing the witness on this is the right decision to make. You know what I'm saying? So I have to live by my conscience. I have to live by the spirit. I have to live by the word rightly, you know, does that make sense? <laughs> so here we go. So important. Let's, uh, which, which show the work of the law written in their hearts and in the conscience bearing witness. I say the truth. I lie not my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost. So these are just confirmations of the, of the bearing witness of the conscience, the how important the conscience is. And then it says, wherefore we must need be subject and only for wrath, 
but also the conscience saying, okay, let's see here. I just wanted to go over a few things here. How be it? There is not every man that knowledge, uh, that knowledge for some with conscience of idols. Yet unto this hour eating the thing offered unto an idol and their conscience being weak. So you can get to a point where your conscience is weak. Or you can get to a point where your conscience is not strong enough. So your conscience is still in transition being cleansed. Amen. To being overcoming. Amen. So they're they're having they're they're battling with idols. Amen. So we have to wash the conscience until it knows exactly what's right and wrong. Amen. And so I just wanted to point out a few scriptures on the conscience. So the conscience is so important. So here we are. The bearing of the witness, the bearing of the witness of the con uh, conscience. And then here is the bear witness of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is important too, because without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have no strength. No, I mean, we got direction through the word, but you see what happened without the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament. They all fell. Let's see. Uh, where's that scripture at? It's right here. So it's in Jeremiah 31. Uh, I didn't transfer it, but let me, uh, I'll look it up real quick. Just bear with me. All right, here it is right here. So, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I love this scripture. <laughs> Don't get all of it. Not according to the covenant that I have made with their fathers in that day, in that day uh, that I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was husbandman unto them, and saith the Lord, but I shall bring in a new covenant and put them in their inward parts. I'm just paraphrasing a little bit, but it's pretty much what they said, shorten it up a little bit. He put it in inward parts, and they, and they, and they shall uh, they shall teach no every man that his neighbor and every and his brother, and saying, Know the Lord, for I shall know. They shall know me, they shall all know me, uh, from the least unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. And I will forgive their sin, and I will remember their sin no more. So he will put his covenant in their inward parts. So when he puts his Holy Ghost inside of you, <laughs> the new covenant, amen. So uh, that's one thing Jesus, when he died for the cross, he died for our sins. He paid for the, uh, he paid for uh, your, your forgiveness of sins. He paid for... Uh, your healings, perfect health, deliverance, all that was paid in the atonement. And at, after he said, it is finished, he gave up his spirit so he can dwell inside of each one of us and his glory can manifest inside of us, each one of us. So he can live inside of us so we can become little Jesus just as Christ did. Amen. So here we are. So the bare witness of the Holy Ghost is important. Um, you know, so, you know, it's good to have men of God. We got to have a shepherd, you know, but our true shepherd is Christ. But it's good to have men of God to lead us that direction, just like Moses. Uh, but, but we have to have the Holy Ghost to bear witness. It says, the Bible says, even his own elect will uh, be deceived. And so with that being said, I'm like, hold on. You know, the elect, give me a break. The elect is about the only one got it together that's really whoo, walking the authority, walking in power, walking in signs and wonders, walking, you know, in the fullness. But at the same time, the Bible says his own elect will be deceived. And so with that being said, that's why it's so important to be full of the Holy Ghost. You know, train your conscience through the spirit by the Holy Ghost. And apply this word in your heart because there's going to be a day we're not even going to have a word if we live to that day. We're not even going to have a word to go by. So it's so, so important to apply this word in our heart and, and transition in the word and know the word 
and allow this word to wash us from the inside out and to train our conscience for right and right wrong, you know, and, and, and being full of the Holy Ghost, we bear witness. So when somebody gives us a word, our Holy Ghost bears witness. Our Holy Ghost should bear witness every time somebody gives us a word. If the Holy Ghost does not bear witness, say, okay, Lord, I need you to confirm that word. I need you to, whatever you got to do, if, if it's a dream, if it's a sign, if it's a wonder, if it's a vision, no matter what, I need your confirmation, Lord. And no, and normally I go, but I depend, I depend on the confirmation of the Holy Ghost. And so when somebody uh, releases a prophecy and I'm like, okay, that's a check. I mean, I got a confirmation on that. But if somebody releases a prophecy and I don't get a confirmation on that, I can't put my faith and trust in that. I will receive it. I'll receive it and, and trust in God. And, but I need a bear witness on that because I depend on the bear witness of the Holy Ghost. And you get the same thing with the conscience. So if we train our conscience, what's right and wrong, to stay kingdom minded, to stay focused on Christ, to apply the word in our hearts so we may not sin against thee, God, or people. And, and we sit there and, and on the right track, walk it up right. Okay, yeah, that's not cool. God wants me to walk in the spirit. I know that's going to affect my flesh. So my conscience knows that that's not the right thing. And I need to walk with a good conscience. And so in order to do that, I have to stay focused. And so I get a check in my conscience. I get a check in my gut feeling. That's not that's not cool. I, I uh, You know, I... You know, I, I'm not getting a good feeling about that. And then because you get the gut feeling and because you get a conscience check, then you get what? A confirmation of the Holy Ghost. And when you got two confirmations, that's that's good. <laughs> and when you run with it, like sometimes, sometimes I'll be speaking and, and it's not just, you know, you can, you can actually, I've, I've experienced this too. So you can you get the gut feeling and get the conscience saying, okay, this is right. I feel this is right. Then you get a check of the Holy Ghost saying, yes, a, a, a good check, not a bad check. So you get a confirmation of the ghost and then you go, whoa, I'm in the Holy Ghost. And then as soon as you say, I'm in the Holy Ghost, I normally say I'm in the Holy Ghost. And, and, and I, and I do that because I, I've, I, I was mentored other another man of God that said I'm in the Holy Ghost and we always felt the Holy Ghost. It was just it was a way to to bring the confirmation of the Holy Ghost. So when I say I'm in the Holy Ghost, I just tapped in the Holy Ghost. When I say that, normally when I'm in the Holy Ghost and I say that, and that's normally the only time I say it, when I'm in the Holy Ghost, everybody feels a confirmation of the Holy Ghost. He bears witness that he is speaking at this moment. And I'll get I'll tap in the Holy Ghost. A lot of the times when I tap in the Holy Ghost like that and I say I'm in the Holy Ghost, normally the Holy Ghost actually comes more present and there's a greater manifestation of his spirits in the atmosphere, his angels in the atmosphere bearing the witness of the Holy Ghost. And normally when that takes place, God actually empowers me to fulfill that uh to fulfill releasing the word in bonus. Amen. It actually empowers me to release it in bonus. And then, of course, if we're all in good conscience, our good conscience will get a bear witness in the conscience too. Uh, but but the biggest thing is getting bear witness in the Holy Ghost. But through the Holy Ghost, you can train your conscience to get a bear witness in the conscience too. The Bible even said it. I pointed out scriptures. Go watch watch the replay. Amazing teaching of being washed with the word, the renewing of the mind, the renewing of the heart, the renewing of the soul, becoming one mind and one accord through all aspects and, and with the Holy Ghost. Your spirit and his spirit bears witness. I'm going on into the bear witness of the Holy Ghost. Hebrews 2, 2, 4 talks about the bearing of the witness of the Holy Ghost, his spirit, and his, your spirit. And then let me, uh, I just wrote these scriptures down and I didn't uh, look them up. Let me look them up real quick. Let's see here. John five thirty three. So John, 
Let's see what John 5, 33 says. You said unto, uh, yeah, the bear witness of truth. Uh, the truth gets bear witness. Uh, Acts 1, 8. Uh, I think that one is, would become witnesses. Let's see. Acts 1, 8. Let me touch down on that just real quick. I just want to go over the bear witness of the Holy Ghost. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto both in Jerusalem. Yeah, so from whatever city you're in and whatever city you're going or country or nation, uh, God will be witnessing for you. The only reason why I put that one, it, that, that's not a bare witness, but at the same time, people witness Christ in their spirits. People witness Christ in you in their spirits. So your witness is a bearing witness to them. Amen. If that makes sense. So when you're walking as a witness, you're walking in power, you're walking in authority, you're walking in signs and wonders and miracles. You're walking as a witness of the Holy Ghost. You're walking as a witness of Christ Jesus. And when you are walking in that witness you are witnessing the Christ, the son of the living God, because you become the countenance of the Christ, the son of the living God, the, the hope of glory, the Holy Ghost, the kingdom of heaven. You become that witness. And when you become that witness preaching the kingdom, you bear witness with their spirit. Amen. The spirit of God in you bears witness with their spirit. That's the only reason why I pointed that scripture out, because you become the witness of of the Holy Ghost. So the witness of the Holy Ghost witnesses to their spirit, knowing that is uh, of God. That is the Holy Ghost in operation. Amen. So Acts 5.32, the Holy Ghost is given to those that obey. How do we obey? Through the word. How do we uh, continue to obey? Draw close to God and draw close to you through the word. Uh, I've hid the word of the Lord in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Hunger and thirst after righteousness and you shall be filled. Uh, the Bible says, be ye perfect as my father in heaven. Jesus became sin so we could become righteous in him. Also in uh, Romans 8, 1, it talks about uh, there is no condemnation that are in Christ Jesus who walk uh, not after the flesh, but after the spirit for us to walk without conviction or, or without condemnation uh, for there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. We have to be one in Christ. We have to be walking in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So for us to do that, we have to be in sync, in alignment, in one with the Holy Ghost. We have to be one with the word. Excuse me. And for this to take place, it has to wash us clean so we know a good conscience, to walk in that good conscience. Because if we're not walking in a good conscience, we're walking in condemnation, if that makes any sense. So we have to stay in a good conscience. We have to stay bold. We have to stay upright. We got to stay confident in the Lord. We got to know who we are in Christ. So that's why that's very important. And the Holy Ghost is given it uh, to those that obey. Come on. They said, well, uh, in the book of Acts, you know, um, it talks about, well, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. Should we forbid what or no? Peter rose and said, you shall be baptized in the name of Jesus for your remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So they were still baptized again. Even, uh, even after they were baptized and they still never received the Holy Ghost by the laying of the uh, hands of the apostles. Uh, they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is for everyone. Without the Holy Ghost, we have no power. But with the Holy Ghost, we have the power to overcome the world just as Christ did. He overcome the world so that we may overcome the world. Amen. So the Holy Ghost being led of the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So for us to get to that place in the Spirit... We have to continue hunger and thirst for it. Just same as the word. We have to hunger and thirst for the word. The word and the spirit has to become balanced in our life. Because if we're sitting there hungering for the spirit, we get words of the Lord. But we're not applying this word in our heart also. But it takes a balance of both word and spirit 
to become one, amen, and for us to become one with the conscience, and the conscience helps us also uh, to become one and become an overcoming man, amen. So then, yes, Romans 8, and Romans uh, 8, 16 talks about the spirit bears witness with your spirit. So it's so important to stay in one, in sync, joint hairs with Christ, become one, invisible, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So Holy Spirit, God, release whew, your anointing upon your people. God, fill us with fresh manna from heaven, Lord. Dreams, visions, release an awakening upon us. Lord God, help us to understand your spirit, God. Help us to come submissive and humble on your spirit, God. Help us to stay in one with your spirit, God. We need the confirmation of the Holy Ghost, God. We need your Holy Ghost and fire, God, to release boldness, to walk in power, to walk in fullness in all that you have called us to do, God. We need to walk in a good conscience, God. We need your Holy Spirit and your word to train our conscience what's right and wrong. So we have a no compromise spirit, Lord God. From glory to glory, God, our convictions will be convictions to walk up right before you, God, and to walk as a place of Levites and priesthood, royal priesthood. Let it come back to your church, the old ancient path that you have provided for your children, God. Let it come back to your church, God. In Jesus' mighty name, God, let the good conscience come back to your people, God. Let us not depend. It's good to have prophets. The word of the Lord gives words to the prophets for the future to prepare the way of the Lord, to prepare his church, but I'm here to tell you, without the confirmation of the Holy Ghost, you will be swayed from every wind and doctrine. So, Lord God, just release the outpouring of your spirit, God, upon your people, God, understanding wisdom, God, the bearing of your witness, God, let it come to your people, God. Let us be trained, God. In Jesus' name, by your word and your spirit, let it fill us from the inside out, God. In the name of Jesus, God, release a fresh fire to your people, God. In Jesus' name. <sighs> Offerings are in the post. RevivalHarvestMinistries.org. Please sow. We need all your support. We're doing a Revival Harvest America here in Charlotte. We're calling out. Whoever wants to come, a thousand evangelists wants to flood the streets. You want to go preach the kingdom with boldness and fire. You want to preach the kingdom with uh, with uh, 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 another measure of boldness of fire. Do you want to go lay hands on the sick and heal the sick? Do you want to uh, cast out devils? Do you want to heal leprosy? Whatever it may be. Uh, raise the dead. If we see a dead, let's go for it. It's all in the go. The manifestation comes to you when you're in the go. And if you want to learn, if you want to know, do you want to join other men and women of God? We are doing a Revival Harvest America March 18th through the 21st. And we need uh, 22nd, 18th through the 22nd. We need your support. Uh, 21st. 8 through the 21st. Had a little check mark there. We also got a missions in Africa. And it's coming up in April. We might have to push the dates back depending on the restrictions. On We don't really know how that, but we got it planned for April, two weeks, Africa trip, missions. Pretty excited. I got my passport, so I'm excited about going. Hopefully all the funds and everything you know, comes together on that. But Revival Harvest America guaranteed event. March 18th through the 21st here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're going to flood the streets here in Charlotte. And we need y'all. We need y'all's heads and feet. Y'all have a word from the Lord in y'all's heart. Please come. Please be the mouthpiece. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. Just believers coming together, imparting fire that's within us, our, what we know in our knowledge, whatever, come together. And let's go take it back to wherever y'all come from, y'all cities, y'all's regions. Let's carry back the fire. And uh, the whole point is get the churches outside the four walls, then also, um, also build our faith, edify our faith. 
Amen. Believers coming together, edifying each other's faith, imparting what we know to each other. Also, there will be discipleship. If you don't know how to do outreach, if you don't know how to go lay hands on the sick and see them recover, you know, the Bible says freely if you receive, freely give. The gifts of the Spirit are subject to the Spirit. Get filled of the Spirit by the land of the head, whatever it may be. Uh, get filled with the Spirit um, and you could walk in every gift too. It's a, it's a matter of whomsoever will stand in the gap. I believe we're all subject to whatever gift we want. We are sons and daughters of God and we have received the inheritance in Christ and we can be little Jesuses if we're in the go and you will have a manifestation of his presence upon you if you continue to walk um, in the Lord, in the spirit and go and do all that he's called you to do. So, Lord God, just release a fresh fire upon your people, God. Lord God, let everyone that's given, Lord God, let it multiply. Let it multiply in Jesus' mighty name. And this teaching from today of the conscience, training the conscience upright, God. Lord God, just, just release wisdom and direction, Lord God. Just pour out your spirit upon them, God. Just glory to glory. Let the word, the knowledge, the understanding grow from glory to glory in the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. You said, if we walk in the spirit, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Lord God, give us more wisdom, more knowledge, and more understanding. Freely if you receive, freely give. If anybody needs to be healed on the broadcast, we command 100% healing in the name of Jesus. We command all spiritual warfare, every unclean spirit, opposition spirit, every spirit of witchcraft. We command that any word curse spoken over your life. We command these spirits, these curses to be cut and broken off of your life and cast forth and never return in Jesus mighty name. Lord God, just release healing spirits, angels upon everyone that's watching that needs a healing. Minister to their body. Loose your anointing upon them. We command every organ, vessel, nerve to come into complete alignment right now by the word of God and by the authority of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, just loose your healing, virtue, anointing. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord.